Hey everybody, it's Laura with Jot and Tittle Vintage Typewriters and it's been several weeks since I've uploaded a new typewriter tutorial. It is magazine season for me and so that means I just ran out of time um, to do typewriter stuff. So um, if you guys don't know, I have a magazine called Paola Lane. You can go to paolalane.com and check it out. Um, okay, so today we're going to take a look at a 1953 Smith Corona Super. Not silent, super, not silent, just super. And I don't even think I have a tutorial. I, th I think this is my first tutorial video just for the super. This is the first year they were made. Um, this one is in perfect condition. The exterior, This is the original uh, finish on it. You've got the hunter green speed lines on here, um, the hunter green keys, the beige. Um, there's no scratches on this one, and when I typed on it, it typed very well. Um, here is the type sheet, because you guys always ask for me to show that to you. There is a bit of unevenness, I've noticed, in the keys that... I don't know if that's something that can be adjusted or if that's just the wear and tear of the keys. That is Rob's, uh, his area of expertise, not mine. So um, anyway, I'm going to uh, show you how to use this if you've got one. And we'll start from the back, work our way forward, and then I'll type a couple lines on there for you. So, okay, let's take a look. See, and by the way, this one typed so well um, this would be definitely something I would re recommend um, for active writers um, and even if you have petite hands like I do you can still type on this very well so this is probably one that I am eager to um, um, encourage or recommend for a variety of people for a variety of uses I don't I don't see any hindrances for um, smaller hands or weaker fingers because um, it just types very well. Obviously, that depends also on the condition of the typewriter you have. Um, when you have one that's in very good condition like this one, um, it's really just going to work quite well for you. Okay, so you can flip the back up if you want and back here and see some of the... Um, what is the words for that? I don't know, just the stuff back there, but you don't need it. Sometimes this is where you would set tabs, but on this one, the tab set on the super is up here, but it's easy access for repairs or for cleaning. Um, here is your paper holder, margin sets. You just press and drag, all right? Um, you have your line selector on the left side, and what that is is when you hit your return handle, it's going to advance either one, two, or three lines, and it'll take you, you know, you push the carriage all the way to the beginning of your line, which will be wherever you have your margins set. So it'll stop there. So your carriage is only going to move as far as where your margins are set. So there you go and there's the bell on that very sweet bell um these little doohickeys here they um help keep your paper down and taut against that roller some people find them um i don't know some people push them out of the way and other people use them i'm the kind of person that i usually push them out of the way um, this bar right here also helps keep your paper taut against the platen or roller however you want to call that you have a margin release back here. You pull that forward, doesn't matter which one, and that releases your carriage, comes in handy all the time. Um, also on the left side is, uh, feels like a button. If you pull that out, that um, releases the platen for variable spacing or, um, and that comes in handy, for example, uh, I've got a dot grid paper, but lined paper, if you put it in and you wanna line it up just right, then um, that's where this comes in handy. You just pull that out and kind of then line up exactly where you want it because when you turn the handle, it, it clicks every half of a line and sometimes you want it just kind of right in between that. 
Um, also, you saw me pull this forward when I loaded the paper. That is your paper release, but it's also great for lining it up. You saw I loaded it and it was a bit crooked, so I always bring the paper up till they meet and then make sure that's nice and even and then um, make sure you re-engage before you try to type. Okay, I'm gonna move the carriage all the way to the left. And the reason is I wanna open up the top and um, you always wanna have your carriage off to the left because you don't want this handle to scrape your top and you can't open it all the way if this handle is over the top of your typewriter. So we're gonna open that up. It uses a universal ribbon. We have one in, uh, we always put new ribbons in our typewriters. This one's really clean. So you can see this takes, um, we put in a two color uh, ribbon, which is the basic is black and red. Black is on top, red is on bottom. There are other colored ribbons out there you can find on eBay or Etsy. Um, as long as it's a universal ribbon um, spool, which means two inch spool with a half inch ribbon, it's gonna work on your typewriter. So over here, down here, you'll see um, L, two, three, four, five, six, and then H, um, and that just has, that's your touch control. It just determines how hard these type bars are gonna strike your paper. And perhaps, you know, I showed you that type um, sheet where it's a little bit uneven. You know, perhaps if I move this up to um, a five or a six, it might imprint a little bit easier. Each person is gonna want that in a different place. I don't always notice a difference. Um, because we all type, we all type differently. We all have different pressure. Like my husband has a very heavy hand um, when he types to the point where I'm like, man, you're just gonna, it sounds like you're just gonna pound right through that typewriter. Whereas I have a very light touch. And so that impacts how your typewriter types as well as this little adjustment here, okay? So I'm gonna, um, and then also here's your ribbon reversal right here so this one is going this way and then I can turn around and go this way um, some ribbons have a grommet on them which will um, trigger an auto reversal reversal that has to do with the ribbon not the typewriter okay so uh, let's keep looking I'm gonna scoot this up here a bit and we have our um, backspace and then remember backspace does not erase, just backspaces. Uh, you've got your keys all here. So you've got your shift. So it types lowercase and numbers, and then your shift or your shift lock will type uppercase and symbols. So that's what that is for. And then you have your tab. Oh, also you have your color selector. Black is on top, red is on bottom, and then you'll see a white in the middle, and that white is stencil setting. Your typewriter is not gonna type properly if it's on the white. So two things to look for. If your typewriter is like not typing right all of a sudden, two things, reverse the direction of your ribbon first, and the second thing is check your color selector. If it's on white, it's not gonna imprint properly. Um, and then when you get to the end of your spool, sometimes you're just typing away and it feels a little bit different. Um, don't panic, just reverse the direction of your ribbon and most of the time that's what that is. Okay, so let's talk about our tab and um, margin release. So I'm gonna come over here and right now I have a tab, one tab set. And if you wanna clear that, you just hit clear. That clears it. Um, and if you want to set a tab, you just put it where you want it, push down on set, and there you go. That's how you set and clear your tabs. Um, margin release. So when you set your margins over here on the right, when you get to the, just before you get to the right margin, that bell, there it is, it's going to go off saying, hey, you're at the end of your where you set your margin, you might wanna hit that return handle and go to the next line. But sometimes, see I'm right in the middle of my word and I just misspelled it. So now it's stopped on me. I kinda of wanna finish my thought of my word. So I'm gonna hit MR, which is margin release. Finish my word and then go continue on.
So that is the basics of the Smith Corona Super. Um, you know, most typewriters, it's all pretty much the same. Once you figure out one, for the most part, you can figure out all of them. But each one does have its little nuance. And it's it's nice to have a tutorial for your specific typewriter. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if you've got one, I encourage you to get yours out and follow along with it. And um, and hopefully if, there's, if you're stuck on something, this will help you figure that out. I appreciate you guys watching. Please give us a thumbs up. Um, that is just really, really helps us a lot. And then also subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Make your comments. I try to check them about once a month. Sorry, I can't do it more often than that. Um, I just got a lot on my plate. So I appreciate your patience. And uh, you guys have a great day and happy typing.